issue of discussion where the rescue of the abducted Kuriga school children is still eliciting reactions nationwide. Now, the Northern Elders Forum is celebrating the safe return of the abducted school children. In a statement signed by its spokesperson, Abdulaziz Sulaiman, the forum noted that the news brought a ray of hope amidst a dark period for the community. All members of the forum, however, tasked President Bola Tinubu on effective security in northern Nigeria. Biko, with this initiative, or rather with this situation where we saw, you know, children that were abducted and now being rescued, everyone is happy, but then it begs the question, safe school initiative. We understand this was also introduced that in 2014 by President Goodluck Jonathan to address situations like this. I, I actually want to understand why we're having to deal with such situations in this present time, even when we had it way back then and a program was instituted for such concerns like this? No, it's, um, it's even a lot worse. We talk about the safe school, safe mm -hmm. school. I really don't see so much that has been done. And let's not be labor ourselves about the so-called safe school initiative. Oh. There are so many schools in our country we cannot effectively police all those schools. School, yeah. There are schools located not far away from bandits and uh, uh, hideouts. Bandits are going into even urban centers, like in Guso, for example, the state capital. They are going there to pluck uh, students from their dormitories, from their hostels. Mm. It's happening in Guso, Guso is the state capital. So what are we talking about? Banditry is a big business in northern Nigeria. And these guys will do anything possible to keep that business going. The challenge that we have is to put them out of business. And I don't think that the Safe School Initiative is what will push them out of business. What we need to do is first and foremost, keep the children safe. Don't open schools in places that are not considered safe. Right. I've talked about this a number of times. Bono State made a mistake in 2014 mm. when the students of that school in Chibok were preparing, were writing their school certificate exams. There was no reason to let them sit for the exam in that school because it was considered unsafe. Right. And an alarm was raised, which was ignored at that time. You can assume that, oh, I have like 40 soldiers here. This place is uh, uh, effectively Safe. defended. Mm. But do you know how many fighters are coming to engage your 40 soldiers? That was the scenario in Chibok. But they were outnumbered. The enemy surprised the soldiers on ground. When the enemy surprises you like that, triples the number of people that you have on ground. Anytime Boko Haram wants to take over an army base, mm. they come with maximum force. They come with sufficient number of fighters, sometimes three times the number of soldiers on ground, carrying the same weapons that the soldiers are carrying. They will take that army base whether you like it or not, they will take it. Except, except you get tremendous air support. And it's not every time that you can get air support. Mm. During the Hamatan, for example, with the Sahelian haze, sometimes It'd be difficult they, to can't, they can't fly. Yeah. They can't even fly. Mm. So if they, they too target those periods to launch attack, they know that they will not get air support because they won't be able to fly. Visibility is key. Mm. And the Sahelian haze is, is a big factor. So let's first and foremost short schools in areas that are not safe. I've talked about this place where this thing happened mm. on this program a number of times. The closest army base to it is about five kilometers away. 
there is no network. So even if you raise alarm to who, you can't make a call. How do you raise alarm? And the children are just there in the bush. So first and foremost, we shut the schools that are vulnerable, that are vulnerable relocate the pupils elsewhere. Government must do this especially the governments of the uh, Northwest states. We have a lot of improvement in the Northeast. Mm. These days, I hardly talk about Northeast. The Northwest states shut the schools in, located in places that are not deemed safe. These boys even come into communities, overwhelm police, overwhelm people on ground in semi-urban communities, and they take uh, students away. The students of uh, the forestry school in Kaduna that they went, it, it, it's not far from the state capital. It's just outside the state capital. In fact, when we were doing youth service in Kaduna back then, our uh, NYC farm was located in the area. We used to go to all those areas. And then they kidnapped those students. Banned these target students because they know that they will attract attention. Sympathy. It will, it will be front page news. Tabloids will do 120 points, banner headlines, when they hear that students have been kidnapped. Now that we know that students are their target, we've got to keep those students safe. Short schools where you cannot guarantee that those Safety. boys uh, can't overrun, mm. then relocate them. That's what Bono has been doing since 2014. No one has overrun a school in Borno State mm. since the Chibok incident. Mm. They picked up valuable lessons from it. The Federal Government Girls College in uh, um, Monguno, they located it to the state capital. So this is the thing. All of the talk, and then uh, Northern, uh, I read part of what you know, the, uh, the statement. Yeah. They say, ah, enough is enough. Uh, this government is not protecting our people. The, of course, the government ought to protect our people better. I admit. But what are the Northern leaders doing? Professor Usman Yusuf, that used to be in the uh, National Health Insurance um, uh, Scheme, said the other day that President Inubu cannot protect Northerners. It's Northerners that will rise up and say, we want to protect our people. Shifting the blame, looking for who to blame in this case, will not achieve the aim because there is a collective guilt. How did they move children from Brinengwari mm, uh, Forest in Kaduna it's all the Zanfara. way to Zamfara? About 200 people. Mm. <laughs> How did they do it? Yes, you could say there's the Zamfara and Kaduna, the Shia border. Well, it goes beyond that. There are, there are two, um, two words in Safe, for example. Mm. Safe, uh, the west of Safe, local government, the Shia border with Brinningwari. But people must have seen them when they were moving those children because they moved them on bikes. You can't claim that you didn't see them. How come that by our own conduct we indulge the criminals? How come we don't raise an alarm? Is this the way we want to go on with these good for nothing bandits? Yes. Only to come and blame government? Is there no role that clerics can play? Clerics are very, very strong, they are very influential. Right. In northern Nigeria. Is there no role that they can play? What are the emirs doing? What are the district heads doing? Can't the North, Northern leaders come together and say, look, enough. I am from the North. I was born in Zaria. And I speak the language. But I'm embarrassed by the level of insecurity in the, in the, the, in north. the north that we used to enjoy visiting. There are places when in those days when, when we, were, we were, even enjoyed traveling, traveling in the night. The places where they kidnap people these days were places that we used to uh, uh, go and relax. Today you can hardly move around. It should bother Northern leaders sufficiently to the point that they'll say enough. That enough that they are saying, that press statement, right. that enough shouldn't go to the president. It should go 
to the leaders themselves. The leaders. I remember the Emir of Anka saying something similar to what Professor Yusuf said. I hardly agree with Professor Yusuf. But on this one, I agree with him that the solution to this problem rests in the North. The North should look at itself in the mirror and say, ah, how come the people of the Southwest, they don't face this problem? How come it is we in the North that we are facing it? Whether it is Kogi or not, uh, Northwest, it's a matter of crying shame that we have this level of insecurity. Right. It should bother them. They shouldn't just say because somebody is president, therefore he should take all the blame. What are you, what are you doing? Look at Kaduna with all of those security uh, uh, military formations. They even went to the, uh, to the extent of uh, 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 kidnapping soldiers inside the NDA. Come on. <laughs> Things unheard of. So they should listen to, to Professor uh, uh, Usman Yusuf. That thing that he said should be in a wake-up call. Right. The release of these children, as uh, the Northern Elders Forum uh, uh, statement writer said, is a wake-up call. It is Professor Yusuf's uh, uh, statement that is a wake-up call. How come he didn't see that? <laughs> How come he didn't see that? GKB, as much as most of us will agree with what Babajida has said. What are your take home from what has transpired in the North and what do you think the Northerners should do differently? Now it seems like the Northerners are the ones facing this challenge and they should be, they should be the ones to address this situation than to toss the blame on the presidency. First, let me take it at the national level. Let me first commend the president. The statement he made, about not paying for, for not paying kidnappers. Mm. He told me my voter in the war against kidnapping. Because once you remove the economic incentive, the thing will start to fall apart. And by doing this, you know automatically this is a president who is not willing to take prisoners. Number two, I'd like to thank the NSA and the people at the top. It's not all of them are not generous. Apart from the chief of army staff. The NSA is a northerner, the defense minister is a northerner. So, well uh, so it's basically a northern thing. Mm -hmm. So I want to also commend them for making sure that the army were not restricted. As back in the day, mm. when they would get to the door, and somebody would tell them to hold up. <laughs> My investigation into what happened has shown that they were given a free hand to do what they deemed necessary. And they did it and got results under two, three weeks. Mm. Normally, under an old administration, we will, we will still be issuing statements right now about what we will do. And that may take another six, seven months. <laughs> but this president has shown that he's not really interested in talking. That's why what he said was very, it was very clear. We are not paying bandits. The so law, that told me. The law even forbids anyone to pay bandits. So that to me was, and even no, the, the governor of Kaduna was very emphatic about what really happened. Mm. That's it, what happened, and they were very clear that money would not exchange us. So to me, this is the beginning of reversing because, like they said, it's, a, it's an economic activity. And once the incentive is not removed, no matter what you say, they will continue to operate. Mm. Number two, they are now trying to expose those behind terrorism financing. I wish they could go further than just naming them. Let's have a court session on mm. TV and bring out more people that are doing this. Three, they are mopping up loose change. And normally, because it's very funny that a country like Nigeria, you can move around 800 million naira and you cannot trace it. Mm. That means you don't have any bank. All we have are just, uh, we are like just money collectors. Because the banking system all over the world. You cannot take 800 million and, and there are no the traces yeah. to show it. Even those of us who have $50 in our, in our foreign accounts, they will keep telling you the trail of the money and where it's coming from, why it's not going. So those three aspects to me are key. And I hope they can sustain it. Of course, there will be political fallout, like Gideon said. There are the consequences. Because you know, later, once the free money runs out, they will now face their leaders. Well, the copy seats. 
are the culpable. Mm. Because a lot of them look away because it serves their interest. And these things happen. But sooner or later, the chicken will come on to roost. Absolutely. And this is what is doing. When I read the statements, I just read it off. Because we know what happened in the last eight years. And we know where the elders stood until about six months to the end of that administration. We know where they stood. They were blind, deaf, and dumb. <laughs> now they are very active. Good for them. I'm nothing against them. But let them also go home. Because I know how we secured the Southwest. I know. Yes. Yeah, uh, you remember when, when um, these cultists, these ritualists were killing people in Ekorodu? Yeah. Mm. On this program, mm. I challenged uh, uh, Are Ghani Adams. I said, you can't be here and this is happening. Mm. You can't be here. Ghani Adams joined the police to on a night raid. Mm. If you remember, on a night raid, he joined them. They fished out this boy. Because whether we like it or not, OPC knows the bad boys. They know where they are. They may choose not to kill them, but they know where they are. And when they wanted to kill in Akala, we saw what happened. It was a clean out. Mm. No one is recommending that Such kind action. of uh, approach. But we are saying we can fish them out. So if um, the if Ghani Adams joined the police at that time with his boys to raid Ikrodu and they found those boys and since that day since that day anybody who is resident in Lagos who knows what goes on in Lagos will recall that that thing came to an end that week was the last day that you will hear that they smash somebody's head you know with that they used to grind pepper we have, so we have, you can find a solution. Absolutely. We have something called the Southwest Security Stakeholders. Hunters, vigilantes, and all that coordinated at that level that Gideon is aware. And that's why the Southwest has been very secure because everybody is cooperating with these guys. Remember about two years ago in Ogun State mm -hmm. when these church members and then the police came out to say this and this. But we knew what really happened. We know that it was the vigilantes and the hunters that know where they were. Right. That's why I always commend last week when the CPO Ogun State, uh, Biodwala Mutu, took that action against people in the bush mm. and uh, destroyed their camp somewhere around the area. Right. Because, the, because Southwest is peculiar. People may not agree with each other, but they agree on one thing. There must be security of and their region yes. and property. And that's why it's the most secure geopolitical zone in our country. No well, doubt about it. Let's quickly go on a very quick break. It's still on to journalist hangout. We'll have more discussions in just a moment. Well, we're still discussing the issue where about children were rescued by the military in Kuriga. BKO, let's quickly have your perspective on this matter before we move on to our next issue of discussion. What's the way forward of, of this so that we do not have a recurrence in we future? Say eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. Our people need to be vigilant. People saw those children when they were being moved. They can't deny. Safe local government, I went there, I did stories, I have videos. I know the grazing routes. I stood in one of the grazing, grazing routes and I did a pistol camp. These are the areas, these are the routes that the bandits use. Come on. Ha. The, the um, Fufu, they, they call it uh, Burtali. That is what they call those roots, those grazing mm -hmm. roots. So from the west of Safe local government in Zamfara, they move them through those two uh, words, Kizara and Keta. Mm -hmm. Move them, move them into Zamfara because those are the border, yes. border the, uh, the, those communities are those two words are the border communities uh, the border community move them move them all the way through brutally which is in English known as grazing routes right through those grazing routes they can link communities all of those states up to Niger the northwest states and Niger, they used to be part of one state called the Northwestern State of Nigeria mm. back then. 
with one governor. You can imagine all the way to Kebi, along the border with Niger Republic. Very massive state at that time. So all of those communities link one another. All of those states, are trying to get Niger, Kaduna, they link one another. Mm. So from the Brinengwari forest, you can get to Kasina, you can get to Zanfara. But people know the grazing routes. They know it's those grazing routes that they will use their bike on to move people. You can't say you didn't see them when they were being moved. There were no trails. Did the communities raise an alarm? Mm. We have to be good Nigerians. Did That's they raise an it. alarm? Or they simply fear that if they raise an alarm, these boys will come back and That's slaughter right. them. Of course that happens. Right. You know? But we have to stay focused. We have to stay patriotic. loyal to our country. We have right. to stay patriotic. Yeah. So people know that you can't move more than 100 children. You must pass through communities. Even inside Sambisa, there are communities. Yeah. Sambisa runs through seven Nigerian states. There are communities inside Sambisa. There are communities inside the Brinengwari Forest. There are communities inside Rugu Forest in uh, Kasina, which runs all the way to Central Africa Republic. Mm. What are we talking about? I will say we didn't see them when they were moving them. I mean, tell me another story now. <laughs> GKB, where do you leave this now? From patriotism, how can we key into this so that we do not allow this? To repeat no, but, no, nobody is coming to save us but ourselves. Right. That's the reality of our reality. You can write all the grammar we want, you can say all things you want to say. Ultimately, we have to stand up and defend our space. Throughout history, those who topple kingdoms and empires are people who stood up and said enough is enough. Right. And so the people in that part of the country must wake up and then decide to take their space back. Because it's not only dangerous for the country, the food crisis is, all, is already here. And if we are not careful, all of us will be affected down the line. Mm. And that to me is the real danger. Right. Let's move on to our next issue.